Alright, tag me in guys, it is time to review the first Raw Super Show of 2012. In other words, 1-2-12, the famous, you know, from all the video vignettes, you know, it begins 2012, etc, etc, etc. What does it mean? Nobody knows. Alright, starts off, Monday Night Raw, the first televised WWE programming in 2012. Of course it starts with John Cena. John Cena comes out, wishes everybody Happy New Year, and the, ch the crowd starts chanting, You suck. The only reason I mention they chant, You suck, is it's not the typical, you know, let's go Cena, Cena sucks, that the WWE is now playing up on. No, it's just a loud, pronounced, violent, vocal, you suck, and it was big and loud and wonderful. <laughs> uh, starts off with a couple of jokes, starts talking about how... Um, his father has been banned from all WWE programming and how he's gonna bitch slap uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson at WrestleMania, da 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 da. And I will never change my values of hustle, loyalty, and respect, and all the, you know, quote unquote hot garbage that he likes to spew. Panders to the pa fans, reassures them that they have the freedom of speech to tell them that he sucks as much as he wants, more or less. And then talks a little bit of shit about Kane. And, uh,. What happened with him and Kane at the end of last year? Now Kane comes out. He doesn't really come out. His music hits. The pyro goes off, and all you hear is a voice, more or less saying, "You're going to witness the power of hate tonight." So I'm thinking, okay, John Cena is going to get fucked up. Great, awesome. Start off first match of 2012: Daniel Bryan versus Cody Rhodes. You know, World Heavyweight Champion versus Intercontinental Champion. Thought it was kind of funny because I thought this was a match that they could have done on SmackDown until I realized both these guys are defending their titles on SmackDown. Therefore, you know, it's okay. Rhodes in the very, very early going, and I had to write this down because it was really, really an interesting thing for me. Rhodes tries to submit Daniel Bryan right at the beginning of the match, which is... I only say it's interesting because Cody Rhodes is, you know, more or less known as a striker and a grappler or whatever. He's not known as a great submission guy, so for him to take it to Daniel Bryan in his own, you know, wheelhouse it is cool, and it, it showed a very aggressive, confident um, mindset and whatever. Uh, other than that, just a, a, a great average match, as you would expect from the two of these guys. I have to put it out there because I know I say it week after week after week, and I've said it in multiple reviews, multiple pay-per-view reviews and all that. Um, there's nothing really prettier right now than the beautiful disaster kick from Cody Rhodes. It's just right there and you hear the crack and you feel it. And you don't feel it in the sense that it's real, but you feel it in the sense that he delivers it great and most of the people that take it receive it great and sell it great, you know, because he's not having matches with John Cena who doesn't know how to sell. But anyways, Brian wins with a roll-up, which, um... You know, it's, it kind of seems like he snatches victory out of the jaws of defeat, which is not good when you're the world champion and the guy that you're facing is only the intercontinental champion, but whatever. We move on. We see the vid from last week of R-Truth attacking The Miz, and we see Miz talking in the back with John Laurinaitis, very, very upset that he hasn't done anything about R-Truth and, and what he did last week and whatever, and instead, uh, John uh, Laurinaitis says, we're going to have a couple people in the back watching out for R-Truth while you have your match with Sheamus tonight. Uh, the Miz uh, goes on to say, I'm going to be a sitting duck, why are you going to make me a sitting duck, etc, etc, etc. They show him walking off, pissed off down the hallway, and then we see our truth looking all crazy as shit, doing a, doing a chicken dance and being psycho and awesome. Um, it becomes a pat. I don't know when exactly it happens, but it becomes a pattern for the rest of the night that whenever they show a backstage segment with The Miz, they show our truth sort of hot on his heels, except he doesn't really know it. Uh... I don't know why things like this happen sometimes, but we had Wade Barrett versus Santino Morella. Wade comes out, talks some shit, talks some shit on Orton, talks some shit on the Royal Rumble, and then his opponent comes out, and it's Santino, and Santino talks some shit about the Royal Rumble, and then gets owned by Barrett. That's basically all you can say. There's nothing. I have no time for Santino Morella whatsoever. Sheamus versus The Miz is next, and... Miz, as paranoid as he is about our truth jumps in the ring, starts it off really, really quickly, hits that, that uh, from the knees DDT thing that he does really, really quickly, and ties Sheamus up in the ropes and tries to beat him down. Now, Sheamus obviously fights out of this and proceeds to beat the Miz down like a pulp, because nobody's giving the Miz any credit for anything right now. Um, Miz Bales tries to escape up the rampway through the crowd, but he is met by our truth <laughs> Um... Our truth with the microphone, basically saying, I talked to little Jimmy, and little Jimmy says, you need to get God. 
chases him back to the ring. He eats a brogue kick from Sheamus, and then he gets another beat down from R-Truth. R-Truth goes back into the crowd, finds one of the kids in the crowd, and says, Little Jimmy, what do you have to say to The Miz? And the kid says, Happy New Year, which was, you know, very, very anticlimactic to say the least. We replay uh, Dolph Ziggler winning the gauntlet match against CM Punk last week leading up into their match tonight and then we have an interview with Ziggler. Ziggler um, basically talks <laughs> some great great uh, promo shit on, uh, on Punk. I can't really remember anything that he said. You know he did some vagueness to you know people in this nation aren't smart especially here in Tennessee and this and that and the next thing and CM Punk's gonna lose and very it wasn't very generic I just can't remember anything that he said specifically then we switch over to a segment in the back between Jack Swagger and Zack Ryder and Eve and John Laurinaitis which was a whole bunch of crap that really didn't make much sense but it ended up with John Laurinaitis signing the match Jack Swagger, Kane, and Mark Henry versus Zack Ryder, Show, and Cena to, as the main event tonight which was really really that's not a good main event, is it? There's all of one guy in there that I'm excited to see, and it's Zack Ryder. So, <laughs> yeah. Punk Ziggler was next, and Punk Ziggler was the great match we all knew it would be. Um, everything. They start off with a bunch of wicked uh, counter pins and roll-ups and some great groundwork and some... Uh, you know, going from groundwork to submission work, from submission work to striking, and they follow, as far as style, they sort of follow each other. When one phases from one style to another, the other one sort of follows suit. And it was a great match, until the ending. Now, somewhere in the match, one of the pads came off the uh, the turnbuckle of the ring, uh, closest to the rampway. John Laurinaitis comes down right as Punk has Dolph Ziggler in the Anaconda device and distracts the referee and says, you have to fix the turnbuckle, da 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 da, -da. Punk throws Ziggler into John Laurinaitis. John Laurinaitis and Ziggler crack heads. Laurinaitis pulls the rope down so that CM Punk takes a nice little wipeout on the outside of the ring and gets counted out. Now, Ziggler won because of the count out, but he ran laps, idiotic laps around the ring with the belt like he'd won the championship to the point where when they came back from break, Jerry the King Lawler had to announce to the audience and clarify that, you know, a count out does not get you the title. <laughs> really, really... Uh, I question the booking a lot. I question anything where John Laurinaitis is involved for that matter, but whatever. And from there we get worse. We have the Bellas versus Kelly Kelly and Eve. The only great point in this match was, well, I will say for the for the fact, there's three great points in this match. Kelly Kelly wasn't in it very long. We had a great moonsault by Eve, and the Bellas won. And uh, not that I'm a big fan of the Bellas, I just don't like Kelly Kelly. So immediately... A lot, a lot like the people that are hating on Randy Orton right now and basically love anybody that goes against Randy Orton, which is total bullshit, I'm going to love anybody that goes against Kelly Kelly because chances are, mathematically speaking, it's impossible for anybody that goes against her to be any worse. Her real name is Barbie Blank. Take the hint. Moving on. John Laurinaitis is in the back with, uh, with Otunga and he's getting his arm looked at because apparently he tweaked his arm. And Punk comes in and starts yelling at him and starts threatening him and da 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 He says, Ziggler has beaten you twice now, which was, you know, gets him the great heel reaction that he wants. And then he announces that Ziggler and Punk are going to have another match for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. Everything's all good. Until he announces that he is going to be the referee. And I'm thinking, great! More overbooking, awesome. John Laurinaitis does not need to be on my television screen. But Punk has the line of the night when he says, you're going to need your lawyer because if you screw me at Royal Rumble, I'm going to be in prison. I'm going to be in prison for animal cruelty because I will beat you like a bitch. Line of the night. Didn't get him anything. Didn't, you know, take away the fact that his end match ended shitty. But it was the line of the night. And even the crowd was like, ooh. Which was kind of cool because it's... PG and oh my god he swore mm. anyways uh, from there we have the very last It Begins promo which went on really really long and then the lights went out and then they did a really sort of cliche lame rumble effect with the with the cameras and then we saw two arms outstretched like this that at first I thought was the lighting on the stage but no 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 I'll get to that in a minute it is Chris Jericho with his arms outstretched and he comes out to the ring and we realize as he's coming down the ring that the lights that we saw in the pose were not in fact a light fixture, they were the lights on his jacket. 
<laughs> totally lame. Totally lame sort of rock star gimmicky thing to do. I loved it. I want that coat. If anybody can go on, you know, www.shop.com and find me that coat, I want it. Lame as that sounds. Jericho came down, and he came down, and he starts, pr uh, you know, pruning off to the crowd here and there, you know, making one side cheer, then the other, then the other, then the other. And he kept the crowd reaction going for at least five minutes, if not more. You know, up on all four turnbuckles so that each side can cheer for him, up against each side of the ring so that each person can cheer for him. Does three laps around the ring, high-fiving everybody around ringside. Goes up and down the ramp, high-fiving everybody on the rampway. Goes back up to the stageway, the entranceway, and, you know, preens and prunes to off to each side, getting every single possible angle of crowd reaction he can get. And then he leaves. Now I'm going to pause. And I'm going to send out a great salute here to Johnny Thunder, because I just saw his video a couple seconds ago, and he popped on only to say this. The fact that Jericho didn't say anything isn't a bad thing. Leaves it open, leaves us all curious, leaves us all wanting to see Raw next week, which is ultimately what the WWE wants, so it's a good move on their part. But really, do you want everything handed to you right away? The fact that he prolonged a, a crowd reaction for five or ten minutes... He didn't need to say anything. He just needed to stand out there and let people absorb that he was back. And, you know, everybody else, I've seen it already. It's all over Facebook. I'm assuming it's all over Twitter. I don't know because I don't use it. Uh, it's already all over YouTube. Oh, that was the worst comeback ever. Da, 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 just because he didn't say anything. Have patience. It's Jericho. It's going to be good. Most likely, he's going to be going up against Punk at Mania if you read the dirt sheets. So, calm yourself. They have three months to build up WrestleMania. It's April 1st, you know. Do you want do you want the entire storyline of WrestleMania to happen on the first raw of the year? Chill. Chill. Now, that should have been the main event. That should have been how this show signed off. But no. We had a clusterfuck car wreck of a main event being Cena Ryder and Show versus Kane Swagger and Henry. First of all, there's no Kane. David Otunga comes down and talks to the referee, talks to the ring announcer. It's announced that Kane is no longer contributing to this match. So they have a handicap match. Show and Henry brawl on the outside and get counted out and fight with chairs and whatever, so they're eliminated. Because apparently this was an elimination match, even though I never actually heard them say that. And if they did, they were really bad about putting it out there. But Kane and Mark Henry get sent to the back, and it's left with, you know, Cena, Ryder, and Swagger. Gee, I wonder who's going to win that one. Broski boot, attitude adjustment, and they win. And uh, somewhere in the process, Zack Ryder got his foot hurt in the in the ankle lock and whatnot. But that's when, of course, the fire goes off, the pyro goes off, and uh, Kane's music starts. Kane is expected to come down the rampway, clearly. Cena goes up the rampway looking like an idiot, saying, Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Because he's a douche. Meanwhile, friggin', uh, he gets taken out by Kane from the back because Kane came up through the ring canvas attacked you know Zack Ryder and choked out Cena on the uh, on the rampway there again with the glove and I'm um, if they re do something really really lame like Kane's got some chemical on his glove or whatever that's gonna really be even more stupid than this already is but um, with John Cena out he goes to drag him by the foot instead he drops Cena's foot and goes back into the ring where Ryder is still, you know, writhing in pain and recovering from the match and whatnot, and goes to pull Ryder towards the hole in the ring that he came out of. And it's all very, very, you know, Undertaker gimmick from 10 years ago, but whatever, I'm willing to go with it. Cena pulls Ryder back out just in time so that Ryder is not hit by the tremendous pyroblast that comes out of the hole in the ramp, in not in the rampway, in the, uh, in the ring canvas where Kane has come out of. So... Yeah, Kane attacked John Cena and choked him out, but yet he's perfectly fine and dandy to go and save his buddy. He is about to drag Zack Ryder to hell, and once again, Zack Ryder only survives because of his big brother, John Cena. Oh, every time Cena and Ryder are on the same team, in the same place, at the same time, Ryder always looks like a little bitch because Cena always has to save him and I don't like that and if that's the trend going into 2012 oh uh, it's gonna be a messy ride but 
Yeah, so we end off Raw with Cena and Ryder overselling and looking horrified into this big ball of fire that's coming up out of the ring. And it was a very lame, messy, sloppy, booked way to end the show after having something awesome happen like Jericho coming back. Jericho coming back should have been the main event. All I'm going to say about that. Now, scores, fails, and MVPs. Now, scores. The Young Guns start... Uh, the Young Guns don't start the show, but the Young Guns have the first match of the night. Rhodes versus Brian was a great, great way to start off actual in-ring competition in 2012. Great match. You know, champion versus champion. It's cliche. It's a little bit overdone, but you get two guys like Rhodes and Brian in the ring together. It's going to be a good match. Um, Daniel Bryan taunting Michael Cole when he wins. You know, hopping up on the announcer's bench and basically putting the World Heavyweight Championship right in Cole's face. That's believable, because if you if you want to take it down to like a like a relatable level, all of us at some point or another have been you know in a in a situation where nobody had any faith in us and no, everybody was expecting us to fail, and no matter how good a person you are, when you succeed, you there's a small part of you, no matter how small it is, that does want to rub it in their face and you know break the wall and especially in the wrestling realm to sort of break that wall between superstar and announcer but if this guy's been dogging you your whole career yeah take that belt take that nice shiny world heavyweight championship and rub it in his face i love that it's a little thing you know it's a little attitude thing but i love it <coughs> the way miz jump started the match with sheamus he didn't win. He actually ended up getting owned by the end of the segment. But the way he had to jump sweat, or, uh, Sheamus before the match even really, really started, it sells how intimidated he is by Sheamus that he knows he has to get in there and get the first shot. I like that a lot. Punk Ziggler, the match. Punk Ziggler, the match itself was flawless. Punk Ziggler, if you carry this through properly, could main event WrestleMania. I have full faith in that. Not to mention that they're two of my fave five, but whatever. Um, take somebody who's not in my fave five. Daniel Bryan and CM Punk could main event WrestleMania if you put the faith in them and put the energy behind them and the push behind them that WWE doesn't seem to want to do. But CM Punk and Dolph Ziggler could main event WrestleMania. That's how good this match could be. But wait, I'm going to talk more about that match on the other side. Now... Jericho coming back. I already said, great. I don't care. He's probably going up against Punk. If not, I could see him going up against other... I could see him having a rivalry that puts Christian in the ground. I could see him going up against Miz, like I said in my fantasy WrestleMania booking. I could see him going up against a lot of guys. I could see him going up against a guy like Ziggler as well. There's nothing he's going to do that's not going to push who he's in the ring with. Don't text me while I'm doing a video. Lame. I could see him pushing anybody he's in the ring with farther than they already are, no matter how great they already are. Um, Jericho is that kind of guy, and he's never going to... He doesn't have to sacrifice himself to make the other guy look good, which is why he's going to look really, really good if he's doing it with Punk at Mania. Just saying. And I want his coat. Enough said. I like... Even though the entire last segment, the, the, the six man that became a three on two handicap was a clusterfuck and a car wreck and da 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 da, I like the fact that Kane was taken out of it and had his spot at the end. Kane had another, Kane was another one, not, as, not quite as big as Jericho, but he had a nice little build before he made his comeback too. His issues with John Cena. His first match back should definitely, definitely not be in a six-man tag where he's only one-sixth of the equation. That would not have worked. I was pissed off. I was on Facebook saying, oh my god, they've pushed him this far, they've hyped him all up this far to have him debut in a six-man match. That's bullshit. When they announced that he wasn't in the match, I thought this is the only thing that makes this segment make any sense at all. Now for the fails. Cena. After the year, after the way the year ended last year, just a week ago, with all the new blood being on top, with the, with the CM Punks and the Daniel Bryans and the Zack Ryders and the Cody Rhodeses being on top, we start the first show of the year with Cena. We end the first show of the year with Cena playing the hero. I sense another Cena video coming, but whatever. Moving on. Santino Morell is just an idiot, and I'm not going to dwell on that. The match with Ziggler and Punk, the ending was overbooked, 
and sloppy and a real, real letdown because it was a really, really good match. And already I can tell you the Royal Rumble is going to be an overbooked match as well because they've got Laurinaitis as the referee. This is a match that needs to happen clean. This is a match that's so good. It We've got guys in it that are so good. They don't need a story. They don't need a feud. They don't need a rivalry. They don't need outside bullshit. Get rid of Laurinaitis. Fuck. Get rid of Vicky Guerrero and let these two guys do what they do best. And that's how you're going to sell your show. My last fail of the night was uh, just what I said before. Jericho making his entrance, making his re-debut and whatever should have been the last segment of the show. Especially with the clusterfuck that the last segment of the show was. Something really, really great and then a really, really lame main event to leave a real sour taste in your mouth as you're leaving the show. Not so cool. I hope the people that were there live got a shadow match, a bonus match after the cameras went off the air that was amazing because if I paid money and that's how I was leaving the arena, I would not be a happy kid. Now, goes without saying that my MVP of the night is Jericho. To hold a 10 minute crowd response without saying a word says volumes for what Jericho has already done in the wrestling business, let alone what he's going to do now. Enough said. Now, funny little thing that I noticed, and this is just, I don't know if these, you know, don't sh don't try this at home vignettes, you know, little uh, public service announcement commercial things happen everywhere, where you've got various stars, Randy Orton, John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, Kofi Kingston, uh, doing the don't try this at home, you know, we are professionals, we really do get hurt, don't try this at home, don't try this at school, etc, etc, etc. Well, there's one with divas, and it's voiced over by Beth Phoenix, and I haven't seen it in a long time, and they, that's the one they played tonight, which is fine, because it's Beth Phoenix doing the voiceover, and it's mostly her, but it's some of the action from the other divas as well, but if you look at the, at the clips in the commercial, or in the, in the public service announcement, rather, some of the action in there is from Michelle McCool, who's long gone, and from Gail Kim, who's in TNA, so either somebody fucked up, or they're trying to poke at TNA. Either way, I found it a bit amusing. Now... Let's look at the Fave Five. Oh. My Fave Five didn't have a good night tonight, guys. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Miz oh, got a beat down from R Truth and from Sheamus. Rhodes uh, was in a really, really good match with Daniel Bryan, but he lost, so ultimately he lost. Ziggler was the winner of the group for the evening, and he got a win by count out. That's not very celebratory, is it? Orton's out, and Punk got screwed by John Laurinaitis again. Not, not a banner way for my fave five to start the year. But that is the first Raw Super Show of 2012. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you guys later. I'm tagging out. Bye. Get up, get down.